This case is made all the way to the Smithsonian in 1991. Um, still no identification even from those folks. For decades, so many have tried. We've taken this revolutionary new field and leveled it up again by doing something of a historic nature. History has been made in the world of forensics. The fact that the man's head was never recovered, I mean, that's key to him probably never getting identified. Human remains were recovered in the civil defense caves in Clark County, Idaho in 1979, and more were found in 1991. He was not going to get identified through traditional forensic methods. So that's where the DNA Doe Project stepped in. We came to his ID in about 15 weeks, but that was after Hundreds of other people from law enforcement, anthropologists, coroners, search teams all tried their hand at it. No one had used forensic genealogy. We found exactly the right person who was the paternal line who had that Y DNA, the maternal line that had the X, and then we had to just figure out which one of those children ended up in that cave. After DNA Doe Project volunteers exhausted 2,000 hours of research in nearly 30,000 possible matches, a DNA test with a living grandchild confirmed the identity. So many cases have been solved now using forensic genealogy that are 40 years old, really. So a 103-year-old case, that's, that's mind-blowing. I don't think there would have been any other way to do that. The headless remains were identified is Joseph Henry Loveless. He was born in Payson, Utah in 1870, but eventually moved to Idaho. He had been incarcerated numerous times, used false names numerous times, and escaped custody numerous times. It's believed he killed his wife with an axe, was arrested under a false name, escaped jail by sawing through the bars, and was never seen again. Research suggests he died in 1916. With so many answers uncovered, who killed Joseph Henry Loveless? In Salt Lake City, Brian Schnee, Fox 13 News, Utah.